Yeah, see, see. It's what? What? The Bud Night. The Bud Night. Oh, you're watching it? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm watching TV now. Oh, oh, it's on TV? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, yeah, welcome, man. This is Joe D, and welcome to the – it's a special – Share a beer show edition of the uh, the big game pre go pre game show. This is share a beer style, man. This is how we do it. We sit around in the comforts of your own wherever you're at and enjoy your favorite beverage. <laughs> that might be water. That could be Coca Cola. That could be you know. I guess there's some Pepsi drinkers out there. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> most of us have beer because it is sh- hello share a beer show. But uh, even I today, I'm having the last of what would be a Paps Blue Ribbon, uh, which is so I technically did have beer on the show. The rest of the show for me will be mixed drinks. <laughs> so I, I will be partaking of the spirits tonight. You know what I'm saying? Getting spiritual. It's a Sunday. Come on. <laughs> you see where I'm going here, right? <laughs> <laughs> huh, Mark? Huh? How was that? Huh? That was pretty awesome. It was pretty, it was good. pretty good or what? So <clears throat> tonight I will be starting with the Kraken, man. This is my first. I just cracked it open actually in the in the pre-show. In the in the pre-show for the pre-game. For the yeah. <laughs> for the, the pre-game. So wow, huh? Figure that one out. So I, I opened it on the pre-show. For the Share a Beer Show pregame, big game show edition. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's correct. That's correct what he said. (laughs) So in any case, though, this is the crack. And this is my first experience with the uh, black spiced rum, uh, 47%. uh, ABV and it's a 94 proof. I mean, it smells. Oh man, it just tons of vanilla and caramel in there. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, Sounds good. It's, it's really sweet. Who who makes oh. that? Uh, rum blended with yeah, spice, caramel, and other natural flavors. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, seven fifty. Fifth. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Seven fifty. Uh, you know, my stupid uh, grocery store <laughs> put a label right over where it says who makes it. It's uh, producers and shippers of. I don't know. I can look it up here in a while. But it's uh oh, it's it's Crack and Rum Company, Lawrenceburg, uh, Indiana. Hmm. Yeah, Lawrenceburg, and yeah, bottled by Kraken Rum Company, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Love the, I mean, just look at the all the detail on the bottle, though. I mean, this is the yeah. back of it. Then you turn it around. I love these little, like, little handles. You know what I'm saying? The detail in the front, all the different details on the top, towards the top of the bottle. And I, man, I wish you could smell it. It, it just smells fantastic. Big vanilla notes, huge vanilla notes. Mm. Mm. Oh, love that screw top as you can as you noticed. There you go. So let me sample it first. <sighs> A little warm, but not too bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you do get those same notes that you're smelling. Wow, it's very good. Nice and caramelly, uh, sweet but not o- overly sweet. It's not uh, doesn't taste fake or anything. It's really, really good. Now, what what flavor should I mix with it? I've got festy or feisty cherry. Okay, okay. I got the two the two other flavors that I haven't had, and the zesty blood orange. Ooh. Which actually the- looks a little grapefruit, doesn't it? It looks like yeah, pink no. grapefruit or something on it. That actually wouldn't be a bad flavor, would it? Like mm-hmm. a pink grapefruit Diet Coke? Yeah. I, I do the, the cherry you want. Then you got like cherry vanilla Coke. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, I vote for cherry also. Yeah. So here's the <clears throat> the festy cherry. I heard the feisty one was like a little feisty. Spice. I'm sorry. 
It was like a little spicy note to it. Oh, wow. Huh. That, that. Those other two flavors were really good for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had the tropical mango. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely, it tastes more like a, like a real deep, rich, like a black cherry. So, yeah, this might be a really good pairing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the right. anticipation. The anticipation, right? Yeah. The like Heinz ketchup. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's funny because I just had a uh, uh, 100% pure all beef hot dog. Oh, yeah. What, what high I use, I love Heinz. And so I, I always use Heinz mustard because I always use, have used, I'm a Heinz ketchup fan. And I'm picky about it. I love Heinz. I'm not a I'm not a, a Dalmont or any other ketchup. I'll eat them if they're you know if they're the only condiment of ketchup there. But if I'm buying in my house, I was raised. My dad always had Heinz ketchup, and that's I'm the Heinz 57 guy. So, um, so now I have Heinz mustards. When they started selling Heinz mustard, I had Heinz mustard. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. And we have someone from Heinz. And then once I started hauling Heinz ketchup, that was it for me. I was like, that's it. You know, and, and then <clears throat> I also <clears throat> didn't realize at the time, though, but once I would go to, you know, that part of the country up there where Bum's at, <clears throat> Pittsburgh and Ohio, to uh, haul uh, different Heinz products, <clears throat> I didn't realize that they do pretty much all tomato stuff. You know, so mm -hmm. the 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 uh, Campbell's tomato soup and, uh, you know, your different spaghetti sauces and all that. Anything tomato. Mm. Bro. Uh, oh, <laughs> these th <laughs> these were made for each other, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you find I think I paid. That was another big perk on this. I think I paid, I think it was under 20 bucks for this fifth. Wow. Of rum. That's it, that's it, it wasn't expensive. I think it was $18, $19. Okay. Something yeah. like that. Now, I don't know if that was a sale price or not. I didn't really pay attention. I just, I do remember the price that was under 20 bucks. Um, and, then, and then you pair it with the feisty cherry. Bro, I'm telling you, man. That, that this is a hell of a pair because the, the vanilla notes in the rum are really, really, really uh, predominant. You know what I'm saying? It's, man, it's fantastic. I got a chance to try out that tropical mango. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Adam. I'll put the link in there right now. Sorry. I, I already uh, did it, uh, Joe. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank I you. pasted it for, for Zach. That tropical yeah. mango is actually pretty good. Yeah, isn't it? The mango is really good, isn't it? But shits and gigs, I just started. I was like, yeah, I'll try it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it has like an actual mango, like eating a mango taste. It doesn't it, and that's really hard to do, isn't it? Like it's yeah. you, you, typically when you get a mango or something, what they'll do is put like some of those kind of foo fooey mango drinks. They'll they'll put pulp in there from something, and you don't quite know if it's real mango or not. But it's just mostly sweet, and you're like, okay, since it's sweet, I guess it could be mango. But that actually, it, Coke did a good job. It actually does taste. You know what? There is a, the, my problem is though, I don't know if it's the rum or the soda, but there, I am getting a little spice note at the bottom of my throat right now. Your problem is you put ketchup on a hot dog. No, I didn't. No, Heinz mustard. Oh, I know hey. you put ketchup on your hot dog. Putting ketchup on a hot dog is no. a sin, bro. No, 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 no. I no, 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 no. I am far too, far too traditional for that. I mean, oh, far okay. too I, was, I was listening yeah, to no. it and in the background, and I heard you say you were putting ketchup on a hot dog, and I just no, have to get I, I am not that. Per I swear. I see oh, people. Yeah. I see. Okay, I would love to know because today's going to be a big hot dog day, right? For some people, mm -hmm. some people's going to do hot oh, yeah. dogs and all that. Mm -hmm. I see people do the old ketchup on one side and and mustard on the other, and then onions and whatever. But I'm like, oh, what are no. you? 
oh no what are you i can remember being in germany okay and this is my my first experience with this sort of with this sort of prejudice right i can remember being in germany and someone trying to get you know a, a, a hot dog or or you know a, a bratwurst right and they, they wanted to put ketchup on it american right and trying to put ketchup on it, and they wouldn't do it they were like nine and they were like, what are you talking about? I want ketchup nine. on it. Nine. Nine. <laughs> they wouldn't do it, bro. <laughs> Only mustard. They were like, uh-uh. No, <laughs> that's, not, that's not part of the footprint. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah, that's not part. Yeah, we don't do that here. You ain't in America anymore, son. That's not the way you do it. Yeah, even on even on hamburgers. When they had a hamburger. Now, this, this is back then. Things could have changed. This is... I don't know. It seems like yesterday. It was probably five years ago. Right? <laughs> but it's probably, it's close to 30 years ago. So things might have changed. But back then, they wouldn't put ketchup and mustard together on anything. I've seen people try to get it on hamburgers. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Not in the mayonnaise country. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, they must no. make good mayonnaise out there. Yeah, well, you you know, the hamburgers was, and that's the way I was raised. Hamburgers is mayonnaise and and uh, and uh, ketchup, right? Or you or you could get mustard, but you didn't mix them. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't <laughs> you didn't mix them, and they would not do it. They would not put if you got ketchup on something, you didn't get mustard. That was the that was the way that went. Yeah. I just <laughs> if if you can put a tomato on it, why are you putting ketchup? That is true. Yeah, yeah. I would rather have a tomato than ketchup with mustard. With mustard? Yeah, no. Uh -uh. Yeah, the mustard with the with the tomato. Maybe a little bit honey. Yeah, I'm, that's a lot. Yeah, I, I love a good Chicago dog. Or yeah, you never put ketchup. On. The weird ones to me are the the barbecue sauce on their hot dogs. Oh, I find that to be pretty good, actually. My wife is yelling at me in the other room. <laughs> Dude, people have really, they have really uh, uh, strict things in their mind of what goes on what. Because I know I do. I've got, boy, you start talking about condiments, right? And I can remember my, for our, my our first meal together, going to service, right? And your first meal together, at least in my case, was breakfast. That was the first meal we all had together. We got there at different times. And so you would you went and had lunch and all dinner by yourself, but breakfast was the first one we had together. Everybody's pretty much getting the same food: eggs, bacon, sausage, uh, hash browns. We're all getting the same food. And I went to basic training in the south, so we all had a bowl of grits, right? And so everybody has the same food. The difference was the condiments, right? And we sit down with our trays. We're all in front of each other, and it's like, eat. You know what I'm saying? And, and we were all looking at each other like, what are you doing? What? Like, you're, you're, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And some guys were putting grape jelly in their, in their grits, and oh, some guys man. were putting, like, salt in their grits and, and butter and salt. And I'm like, what are you guys? You guys are blowing my mind here. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, it was, it was that way. We were all looking at each other and everyone's pointing and <laughs> like, you're doing it wrong. No, you're doing it wrong. You know what I'm saying? We had guys from all parts of the globe, uh, country at that table. We had guys from Wisconsin, uh, the Dakotas, uh, all up and down the East Coast, uh, you know what I'm saying, from Maine, uh, all, all over the country at that one table. It was hilarious. And we were all <laughs> eating the same thing, looking at each other. What? You know what I'm saying? It was funny. Yeah. Speaking of that, what's today, what's the proper way to make a good Philly? What, you know? A Philly? Um, I... I I'm not as hardcore religious. I mean, I would have to ask. <clears throat> Mine's got to have cheese with it. Do you like the Wiz or do you like the hard cheese? I like the Wiz. The Wiz. I like the Wiz. Yeah, the Wiz is good. With, uh, onion and mushroom. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of like the dudes from Philly that's like, fuck you, you can't get mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they, in my experience... 
it was always there was a huge debate with uh with the uh, italian beef sandwiches that you know or or mm-hmm. your sausage and pepper sandwiches you know what i'm saying those were the big debates because some people like to put uh like we were talking earlier with the tomatoes some people like to put a tomato based gravy on there you know you call it gravy when you're italian the tomato sauce for everybody else i guess but you you know some people like to put a tomato sauce on the you know and and others like myself were raised with just literally sausage peppers and onions and you know what i'm saying on the you know on the and that's that was the proper way to make uh you know or you can uh, or you get your bread dumped yes oh oh yes i'm a double dipper a double dipper you like the double dip yeah i I like the double dip on my italian beef. yeah the italian beef double dipped yes yes the au jus sauce yes oh yes Oh, and there's going to be a lot of a lot of Italian beef sandwiches getting eaten today. This is <laughs> right now as we speak. There's a lot of dipping of sandwiches going on right now, right? There's people and they're eating like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the fatter you are, the farther away from the table you got to get, right? And you're doing nope. this, right? Like people are eating tacos a lot easier than they are Italian beef double dip sandwiches, right? Oh yeah, because <laughs> you've got stuff going everywhere, you, right? You ever watch uh, What's on everybody's I... menu today? Oh, all right. Yeah, what is everyone eating today? Well, you start with bum. What are you having, brother? Or what? I did got you a, a DiGiorno in the freezer, ready to go. Sausage and pepperoni. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's my you Super Bowl uh, supper. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And and Mark, what I know, Mark had to have something good. What do you, what do you got going, brother? I got, I got a, I found a bag of those Blaze Doritos. So I'm going to try some of those. I got some too. I got some. Okay, so we'll have to open up and try them together and see. If yes, it is truly like a volcano. But yes. uh, I've got a rack of I've got a rack of ribs in the oven, so we're going to have ribs Ooh. like probably at halftime. Oh, I I meant to get uh, when I went to the grocery store this morning. The grocery store has a huge cart that they'll whip out for special holidays like Super Bowl and, you know, your big grilling type of days. Yeah. And then they'll sell ribs. They'll grill ribs out in the front uh, as you're walking into the grocery store. And I mean, do you smell that as you're walking in? You're just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the oven, but they, they still come out really good. Oh, man. You smell them and you're just like. Oh, 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 you know, oh my god, it's just like you know, you're killing the fat guy over here. What, what, what about you, Tom? All right, we got some uh, we got some chicken wings going with some blue oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, we got some uh, some stuffed mushrooms with uh, with uh, um, stuffed with um, stuffing mushrooms for stuffing, it's delicious. Just yeah. your, your kind of standard regular yeah. size mushroom or a, 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 a regular mushroom with this with stuffing, okay. Stuff. But okay, yeah, yeah. We got some margaritas going. Mm. Oh yeah. What kind of like, tequila? Um oh, I forgot the name of it. It's it was um it's a it, it was a stronger one. It was like a ninety two proof tequila. Oh I forget the name of it. It's like Algara or something like that. Okay. But I know in your area you get one that's supposed to be really good at the um the tapatio. I know your area you can get it. I'm not familiar with it. It's I'm familiar like, with Tapatio hot sauce. <clears throat> it's supposed to be like one of the best, like best buys for tequilas ever. Oh, really? Okay, I'll yeah. have to. And I, I, I was, I thought about getting some tequila, and then I said, no, I really wanted to. I saw that rum, and I really wanted to try that rum. And then I got uh, some Elijah. Is it Elijah Wood whiskey? What, Craig. Oh, Elijah Craig. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah they make good stuff. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So I got some of that as well, and and what about you, Zach? What do you, what are you uh, what are you doing today? Um, me and my wife, uh, the kids staying with the grandma tonight, so we just decided we're gonna do uh, some teriyaki chicken um, sliders with pineapple on the uh, King's Hawaiian rolls. Oh, I thought you were gonna maybe have a little carrot race. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Get to go! Woo! 
You never know. That's when the tequila comes in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. And so, yeah, we got the teriyaki chicken sliders on the King's Hawaiian rolls. And then uh, we're making some uh, chili cheese Frito dip. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yeah, that's always good. Yep. You can't Especially, go wrong. Are you using like Texas style or New Mexico style? Just uh, just Texas style. Okay, okay. Um, want something different today, and then we'll do some beer, and then we got some ho hos. You know, a little ho hos. Ho hos for dessert. Wow, that was I didn't expect that. Right, like ho hos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. I tell you what, man, little Debbie's, man, those little. Uh, those are my favorite. Yeah, I love those little white cakes from little Debbie's, the ones that are frosted and they're kind of like shaped like a stop sign. The zebra, mm -hmm. are those zebra, zebra cakes? N not the zebra ones. They're just all white. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're octagon or uh, hexagon. Yeah. yeah. But they I, don't have. Yeah, any... craving, now, since we're talking about Philly today, now I'm craving some tasty cakes. Ooh man, with the wax paper. Yeah, yeah. My, in trouble. Yeah, my my dad. Uh, I grew up watching. You know, my dad, and you couldn't. You were not allowed to have his tasty cakes. Dear God, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because they were for his lunch. You know what I'm saying? But oh, when I when I would be able to sneak one, or or you, you were blessed enough by the Pope or God or somebody to get one. Oh, it was the biggest treat, right? Um, you know, those so tasty I, cakes. I found that tequila. It was Tapatio tequila. Oh. Do you know which one it was, the Reposado, the Blanco, or the Anejo? Oh, I don't know. They just, um, supposedly it's supposed to be like a the, like a really good um, a really good tequila for like a cheaper price, like one of the best. Yeah, they're all under $50, I mean. I don't know how much like they are because you know how it is when you buy different whiskeys and everything from the north to the south. I could be paying eighty, you could be paying thirty. Well, yeah. and you were right. You were right on the distilleries. La La Alita, Al Alina. The distillery oh, makes tequila tapatio. Um, hmm. Yeah, like it's a, supposed to be a really good tequila. Been yeah, I'm down. I haven't uh I haven't been having tequila lately. Uh but you know, usually when I'm in a bar and I'm drinking, <clears throat> I'm gonna want some tequila at some point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, at some <laughs> so, point. If it's in uh if it's in uh margaritas. Maybe I haven't maybe I need to up my game as far as quality of tequila. Then I probably yeah, oh yeah, yeah, because no, I I don't mess around with none of the cheap stuff. I'll I'll start yeah. getting you know shots of you know some of the good stuff you know. Yeah. But you can spend thirty, so this 30 dollars a bottle. Double distilled, and then aged in American whiskey casks. Mm. Ooh, that does sound good. Oh, let me see here. We've got now earlier. I had that's kind of what sparked the conversation. Was I had I had a um, some hot dogs. And uh, that's what kind of started the whole what do you have on what conversation because, yeah, I'm, I'm a with hot dogs. I'm uh, mustard, right? It, it, mustard. It could be different kinds of mustard. It could be, you know, depending on the mood. Sometimes just regular American mustard. Sometimes uh, a spicy mustard. Sometimes, you know, but it'll be mustard of some sort. And <clears throat> sometimes just onions. Or uh, sweet relish, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I usually put mustard, onions, and sweet relish. I mean, those are kind yeah. of. Well, how about how about the chili? You ever throw the chili on there? Yeah, every mm -hmm. once in a while. Uh, it, 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 will you put mustard with the chili? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do mustard with the chili. I'm a big sauerkraut guy, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sauerkraut's allowed. I, I'm not a sauerkraut guy, but I, sauerkraut's definitely a, a tradition. Yeah, definitely. Well, like this should be a, be, be a little bit of kraut with a little bit of mustard right on the Yeah, 
and, and and will anybody agree with me? I I have been watching. It's funny that I this I, maybe that's why I had the hot dogs is because I was watching all these hot dog cart uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> Uh, Friday, I was watching all these hot dog cart, and don't ask me how I got started on them. I don't have any idea. It's YouTube's fault. Okay. You know, <laughs> but I got started on all these hot dogs. It, it, there's nothing better other than going to a ball game. There's nothing better than having a hot dog out of a hot dog cart. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like Dirty dog. water dog. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like a good old dirty water dog, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, how do you like your hot dogs? Do you like them boiled? Do you like them steamed? Do you like them grilled? I mean, there's so many ways to enjoy a hot dog, right? Yeah. Sometimes, uh, like what I did this time, I, I'm a big cast iron guy. You guys know that. I have cast iron pans. That's what I That's what I cook with the majority of the time. Unless I'm making something tomato-based, then I'll have to use uh, one of my stainless steel pans or a nonstick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, funky tomatoes and cast iron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get the acid. The acid will take up your 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 um. Oh my God, how did I forget the name? Your uh uh, you know your patina. patina. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that the any anything too acidic for too long will will bring that right up. You know, so you'll have to re-season your pan after making. You can do it, but you know it it's all going to be in your dish, and you don't want that. So. Uh, I, with the cast iron though, it kind it's kind of the reason why I don't grill that much, you know. Uh, man, cast iron gives you such that nice char on your food and that nice finish on your food. So I took those 100% uh beef hot dogs and cut them and put them on that cast iron, you know, mm-hmm. open like that, and uh, you get even more flavor. And then you put that down like that, and then I'll put that mustard all down the middle of that slice like that in that in that nice warm bun, and uh, kind of lightly toasted, and oh, oh yeah, yeah, with some oh, onion. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. oh, you know what I like? Throw some jalapenos in there, some slivers of jalapenos. Yeah, jalapenos are really good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I put I will put hot hot pepper rings or jalapenos on on my hot dogs. Yeah, fairly often. Yeah, uh, we tried it the one time. Uh, the wife just drove them up a couple weeks ago, where we hollowed out the jalapeno, cooked it for a little bit, and then kept it whole, and then shoved the hot dog inside of oh. the jalapeno. Oh my god. <laughs> Then you wrap the whole damn thing in bacon. Ooh. Yeah, hey, we, we've got, let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't. So now, Adam, now we were taking, you know, who does what on what. Adam says ketchup on, on burger, mustard on hot dog, no ketchup. That's. That's that's very much agreed. Your your man card is stamped approved. <laughs> <laughs> you got to revoke it. You're gonna send a letter to his house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You you get yeah. yeah, yeah anything a, different than that, you get points off of the man card. <laughs> he just got a one year renewal on his man card. Exactly. Yeah. We have an ongoing debate at the at the brewery of. What classifies a burger? Um, but also, are you allowed to cut your burger in half? A lot of people say you are not allowed to cut a burger. In half. Really? Ooh, really? Um, Is that a thing? It's part of the debate. I, um, I cut my burgers. I, I don't mind cutting mm-hmm. a burger. Yeah, but, I don't mind cutting a burger. Um, what Let's... is the clarification between burger and sandwich? What makes a patty melt? Uh, a sandwich, but makes a uh, uh, you know a burger a burger. Is it condiments? Well, we, it we've 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 got actually we've got a food expert on the show. And, and, and right, Mark isn't isn't the other half like kind of a food expert? He's a food scientist. Yeah. What so, what would what makes a burger? What's the difference between a burger and a sandwich? 
I don't know. She doesn't know. <laughs> There's all the science you can watch. The only thing that pops into my head is a burger is on a bun. A patty melt is on a piece of bread. Yeah. I don't know. But so can patty- you have a burger on Texas toast? Yeah. Yeah. And and you can have a ham sandwich on a bun, and that's still a sandwich. Yeah. But I think a burger is is some kind of red meat. So mm. beef or, um, you know. Lamb, venison, or you know, elk, <laughs> elk in Colorado. Elk. Elk. Yeah, maybe it's for most people something you have to to prepare and like be, way before. Or like you know how like you can go to the store and get slices of ham and just throw them on a sandwich and eat it. But with like a burger, you gotta like I don't know buy the burger. Well, there, are those, there are the crossbreeds as far as you talk the the patty melt or your... yeah. It seems like, for me, a burger has to uh, just to me as a standalone, like by itself. Does it taste good just to, just the burger? I don't know. I'm kind of going off off yeah. track. So then, so then, are, what are sliders? Are sliders little sandwiches? Oh, like, they're little burgers. They're little burgers. Yeah. I, I I've never liked this thing because to me, it's a sandwich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It yeah. you you call it a burger. It's got a nickname. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, so some people take things a little too literally, as we know from today's climate. Oh, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's to me, it's another sandwich. I don't know. I, I should uh, I should amend what I said there. A slider with a little uh, a beef patty on it is a burger, but a slider with anything else on it is a sandwich. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't realize it was. Yeah. Hours. That's like a. People get so worked up about it, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I, 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 if you like it, enjoy it. If you yeah, don't, that's exactly. exactly. As long as you like what's in between the buns, that's all that matters, eh, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Did, oh, Adam also says no green peppers. Oh, come on. You got to have the green peppers, man. No, I think I think he meant that in, in relation to the Philly when you were talking about the Philly. Yeah, it's oh, Philly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't put peppers on Philly. I'm I'm peppers. not as hardcore about the the <laughs> Phillies. Yeah, I would imagine that's <clears throat> like Bum's got a little bit more of a thing. Maybe I I don't have one because I I just, I've had Phillies kind of lots of different ways, and I I find them you know lost you for a second there, Jim. Oh, I I've had Phillies all kinds of different ways. I'm not as hardcore about it because I'm not from that region of the country. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, what you were saying before, Zach, I I would I'm all in favor of mushrooms on any kind of sandwich, including oh. a Philly. But I think I think the hardcore purist would say no mushrooms on a Philly, just the steak and the cheese and the onions. And I get yeah, yeah I assume peppers too. Mm-hmm. I think pizza, it goes in that same line of pizza. It depends on what region you're from. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> boy, pizza, <clears throat> pizza, it depends not only what region you're from, but what style you're having. Like the, yeah. the, the style of the pizza that you're having is going to dictate how you should eat it <laughs> well, yeah, and heard, what toppings I've you should heard, have on it, right? Yeah. I've heard good some New York and Jersey though isn't even pizza. That's that's like lasagna inside of bread. It's like you know they they don't even qualify that as pizza because it's too thick. Um, yeah. Oh, Chicago. I, I, yeah, we've and we've discussed this before. Now, was it you, Joe, that said you don't like the deep dish style? Yeah, I'm not a deep dish fan. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I I and no, as I'm, 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 go ahead, Zach. I love a good deep dish, but it's got to be made right. Yeah. It's uh, mm. about cheese on the bottom and then saucing it up and then topping. Mm-hmm. It's it's the it, needs the top. That, it needs to be that crisp still there, though, I feel. It needs to be like that, the doughiness with that crispiness. <sighs> there, I, all on that. Yeah, you have to have that that nice, thin toasting on the bottom of your crust. You know what I'm saying? You bite into it, even if it is a deep dish. <clears throat> and 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 there's a lot of styles that traditionally don't have that nice toasting. There's yeah. there's some styles that literally you're supposed to pick it up and it's supposed to bend like that. Like you know, 
I like a pizza when I slice to stand up. <laughs> Wong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, yeah, I, like a I like a little flop. On that. Yeah, it should. It should. When you fold it, it should stick out. You know what I'm saying? Now, there's some people, and I guess this is in Philadelphia. Maybe Bum can let me know. I don't know. But I've seen there's some shows on YouTube, and they, they show apparently there's somewhere in Philly where you can get a Philly cheesesteak and true. stuff it in a slice and I've eat them both it. at the it's same amazing. time. I, I haven't heard of that. That's ridiculous. I have seen it, and it looks like the most amazing thing. <laughs> it does. I have admit it it's probably an instant cardiac arrest when you no, have it but I just i just want to sit on a curb <laughs> smoke, a, smoke a joint drink a 40 and eat that yeah yeah like, i just want to trash my life with that. i want to do the exact same thing minus the 40 in the joint you know what i'm saying <laughs> I <can> just... <laughs> No, I, I do have to say, I feel terrible for Bum, who is being related to Philly when he's actually in the much nicer city of Philly. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm five hours away from Philly, so exactly, I... Exactly, yeah. Yeah. He, he's going to be safe tonight, whereas I think inside of that hour and a half ring of Philly, win, <laughs> lose, or draw, it will burn down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, probably, so. yeah. There's lots of couches in the street. And... and now I am going to pour some more crack in here. Uh, it man, is, while is, we're on pizza, real quick, no. though, I was I'm always curious if you could only eat one pizza. I love that. Three toppings the rest of your life. What are your three pizza toppings? Mushroom pepperoni sausage. Just pep sausage. All right. I'm uh, going orange this time. I go jalapeno bacon pineapple. That's it. Yeah, that's a good one. Bacon and pineapple. Yeah. Oh. Pineapple and um, kumquats. Oh. <laughs> but are, are, we allowed, are we allowed to take anything off? Now, now this was in Seinfeld too. What you know, you know, say what what you put on a on a pizza was part of a Seinfeld episode, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I'm pep. I'm pep sausage mushroom. Yep. Me and Zach are on the same page. Yeah. I like that sweet and spice. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of sweet, a little bit of spice. Little so bit of I assume I assume you're talking because there's certain styles, man. If you're having a margarita, you're not having any of that stuff. You're getting basil and cheese. That's it. Yeah, that's you know that what I'm saying. So it, I'd be fine with that. That's tradition. That's, that's I, you know I, what I'm saying. Italian pizza and American pizza are totally different. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, no. I, I, American pizzas. Hey, you want a you want a slice of pizza? Uh, Italian pizzas like I got a pizza pie. Let's to celebrate life. You know? <laughs> American pizza. Well, like, hey, yeah. in the corner. Well, it's you know pizzas. There's a, it's just like craft beer, man. Yeah. Well, you my know. favorite uh, my favorite slice of pizza is actually a New Haven, Connecticut style. Uh, it's uh, called, called Clams Casino. And you get garlic, clams, and uh, bacon. And it's on an uh, olive oil base. Mm. It's the white sauce, right? But yeah, just, just olive oil on it. Mm. But the, mm -hmm. like clams and bacon on a pizza. Is big. Ooh, this is interesting, man. This is interesting. This is, uh, let me taste this by itself. Hold on. It is a good mm. pizza, though. This 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 blood orange is very uh, intense. Mm. This is a very deep sort of orangey taste, man. Does it mix better with the rum than the than the <sighs> cherry? No, <laughs> it's different. I wouldn't say it's better. It's just different. It's yeah. um. So it's yeah. intense, but not feisty like the other one. Not feisty. Ah, it's not feisty. Maybe. No, but it's. It's got its own feisty enough, right? Because it says it's zesty blood orange. It, it you know, yeah. the problem with some orange flavors, do have you noticed, especially orange sodas or pops? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah. They can kind of go. Now, do you guys remember? Now, it's this is going to be for the older guys. I don't know if the younger guys remember this, but you know, when you were a kid and you had to take the baby aspirin, the 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 the, the you can kind of some orange sodas and orange orange pops. They can have that like like baby aspirin or sort of taste to them. I don't know. And that this does as well. That this is my least favorite out of the bunch so far. Out of all the I flavors, was, the one time I was uh, drinking orange pop on the show, Joe, and you mentioned that it's like, thanks, you. I never thought about it that way, but now that you mentioned that, you've like ruined my <laughs> affection for or orange pop forever. <laughs> I've come to the grocery stores and I glance over <laughs> because does that taste like like that baby aspirin? Well, after you mentioned it, it did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be because you already it? had that taste, right? You, there's a taste, and, and it's and it's it's particular to diet. That when you yeah, have right. a diet, which, which is all I drink, yeah. yeah when you have a my diet, orange. Mixer, my favorite rum mixer is this. They make this uh, pineapple orange mango juice that's really good, mm. and then there's also a orange oh. banana mango. Okay, we have we have Craig in there, and uh, Craig says he's currently eating a Hawaiian pizza, which I would assume has some form of possibly Canadian bacon or or they might call it ham with pineapple. Oh. I, I <laughs> pineapple on pizza. You're gonna be alright, Joe. Yeah. Oh. You're gonna be alright. It'll be over soon. Pineapple. Oh. It'll be over soon. And oh. while I like the bacon, I've actually found out like. Because sometimes you gotta break down and get Domino's, you know? Yeah. Oh um, yeah. No, it's like Taco Bell. You know what I'm saying? I've got a million fantastic taco places around me. Taco Bell still exists, right? <laughs> I, I, if I'm ordering from Domino's, it's uh, pineapple, jalapeno, and the Philly steak because you're getting more you're getting more meat than you are the bacon. Uh, and the Philly steak actually goes really well with it because it's got that crunch to it too. Mm. It, I have to now now back on this rum with the orange diet coke variety. Um, definitely like the cherry better personal taste. Uh, like I said, the unfortunately Coke is no different than any other diet orange soda. Where you, for me, you get that baby aspirin sort of taste. That St. Joseph's, I always remember that St. Joseph's baby aspirin taste. Oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? And so it Saint brings Joseph's back. Name. It was that was the only baby aspirin there was. It was St. Joseph's. And it <laughs> you remember, Ooh. right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> it's those memories, man. Like I just they're just burned in my brain, those memories. And so yeah, I'm I don't have a very good memory, but when it comes to taste and smells, I, I can or music, I can remember things like that. Like those things jog my memory really quickly. And so yeah, uh those sorts of tastes. I personally with this rum prefer the fe fest uh, feisty cherry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bob, are you seeing you and James Harrison's? Before the Super Bowl. But I, just real quick, if you see this one in your stores, uh, it's from Hop Valley Brewing. It's called Alpha, Alpha Lactic IPA. Alpha, and wow. it's actually, uh, Hop Valley was one of the places in Oregon that got bought out by Coors. Hmm. Um, oh. So it's actually a Coors product. Pretty good stuff if you can get it. It's a really nice. It's a ninety IBUs, seven point two percent. Okay. It's got a it's got a good punch, but it just reminds me of a damn good old IPA. Just a good old fashioned plain old IPA. Yeah, but it's got some tropicals to it. Um, medium bodied. It says it's got. Northwest and uh, Southern Hemisphere hops. So, uh, oh, it's a little bit multi, but it's really good one if you guys see I it. I just got a, 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 a ring at the door and got a plate of food. See? That's what I'm talking about. Oh! That's what I'm talking about right there. See? We've got... 
we've got the neighbor? yeah the, the the neighbors cooking over there so there there's these uh looks like some sort of salami uh with cheese roll up here and um some sort of other <clears throat> roll up sort of thing there uh, we we've got wings on this side different varieties some sort of pasta here uh this ain't, this ain't a bad plate we got a a big meatball there i'll see That's you guys all right, man. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. See Zach. You later, man. Good seeing you. <laughs> yeah, these are like those, uh, you know, those cream cheese wrap sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there's okay. There's six days off your uh, end of your life down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm -hmm. awesome, though. That is awesome, man. That was cool as hell. That, that, that looks like porn porn on a plate. That yeah. is that this is a food porn plate right here. It's got all the necessities of life. You got your pasta on this end. Let me give you the grand tour here. We got your salted cured meats here, uh, rolled with cheese, and we've got you know your uh chicken wing variety here. Um, you know. Your cream cheese rolled uh, tortilla or wrap things here, and the meatball and over here, like stuffed this meatballs. People, this wasn't planned. <laughs> yeah, this was not planned. You, that door, that door scared the hell out of me, man. I saw your reaction. I, th yeah. actually, Joe, I actually thought you were having some kind of medical condition there. Yeah, I, I thought I was too. Like You're grabbed, God. almost grabbed your heart. Oh, yeah. I mean. Well, he fixed it. He fixed it with the with the with the the uh, the, the cream cheese stuffed thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That got the heart back on its right uh, beating path. Uh, yeah, back on the right rhythm. Yeah, yeah. I swear, what? I get so jumpy over stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't so, know about you guys. You're not ex you're not expecting somebody, so yeah, you're, just, you're in your yeah. Own yeah. I was totally right here, and then all of a sudden you get a that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, you're yeah. you're right here, and then you get a that, and you're like. Ah! You know, what yeah. I mean? it was like, what the hell? And then, you know, some kids handing me a plate of food. My mom sent this. <laughs> oh, thank your mom for me very much. <laughs> yes, <laughs> food is very acceptable. <laughs> Free food, even better. Free food. It just mm. now the <laughs> one thing you can't see is the free that was sprinkled all over it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And delivered. Free yeah. and delivered. And yeah. still very warm. That's mm -hmm. that is all stuff that doesn't translate on camera there. But <laughs> the free can a little bit. That's an emotional support sort of thing. And yeah, you can kind of understand that part. And the delivery part you can kind of get. You're like, oh man. Right. So right now there might be some hate actually going. You know, because they're like, speaking, damn it. Speaking of delivery, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. I think I better preheat the oven. Oh, now, wait, real quick, but, but yeah. because I wanted to get into that <clears throat> before we had the initial pizza conversation. Now, how deep do you get into frozen pizza? Are you one of those people that has your oven on right now, preheating the stone or preheating a tile that's in your oven? Oh, no, no. It just goes on a basic pizza, round pizza pan. Okay. Um yeah, no, I'm pretty basic, and uh, I have no preference. As I've said before on the numerous times we've discussed pizza on the show, I love all pizza. Right. And there was one on, uh, DiGiorno was on sale about a week or so ago, and I bought it, and miracul miraculously it survived a week in my freezer without me eating. And I was like, oh, I'll have it during the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, – but uh, I have no preferences. If you get into the frozen pizza category, I have no preference. I like Freschetta. I like DiGiorno. I like Red Baron. Those are probably the big three of uh, of the frozen yeah. pizzas. Oh, yeah, uh, whatever's on sale is the one that you, yeah, that and you I, get. And I don't buy them. I don't buy them that often. Maybe about once every three, four months or so. Yeah. Do you like the what is it? Freshka? Freschetta. 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 Yeah. Freschetta. Fres Fresca is the grapefruit uh, beverage made by Coke. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, wow, do they make? I, I forgot the name. Man. <laughs> Coke makes pizza, which I'm pretty sure they probably do own yeah, someone that makes a pizza. Yeah. 
Oh, speaking of, look at look at that, Tom. This is a stuffed mushroom. You were oh, just speaking wow. of. There you go. That's. Pr I wonder what the top ten Super Bowl f are. Pizza's got to be number one, don't you yeah. think? Mm. I'll be there. Oh. Number two. Oh. oh, that is a mushroom stuffed with sausage, Italian Ooh. sausage. Oh. With sausage with and sausage. Yeah, a mushroom oh. stuffed with Italian sausage. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh, I don't even know which one to grab. I've still got a little paps there, but I'm going for the, you know. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right now, I've got a plate full of some of the Super Bowl favorites right now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah. Andy, they threw spaghetti in there. That thing tops it all off. You know, spaghetti? I know <clears throat> you would think that's spaghetti, but they're Asian. So it, it's it's more than likely some sort of egg noodle because it's kind of thin and flat and it looks a lot like pasta because they put a tomato something on there. So <clears throat> it's really good and eats just like pasta, mm -hmm. but Maybe, it's um uh, what what are those pe people do um the green squashes? I know a lot of people do that type of stuff too. They'll do yeah. like they'll shred the green squash into like um. Dude, that, God, I am not a mushroom guy either, and that's freaking fantastic. I swear to God. <laughs> mm. That's why I'll typically try something, even though it's not necessarily my because that is that is bomb. I'm telling you right mm. now, I'm mm. not a shellfish guy either. My aunt made shrimp not too long ago that was <clears throat> just the same thing. It was fantastic, and I was like, Whew. I didn't have the heart to tell her she was making this meal, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but. I, I still try stuff, and you know, it was fantastic. Um, yeah, it looks like we've got your traditional, uh, like, uh, spicy, like a medium spicy sort of uh, hot sauce uh, chicken wing, and then we've got like maybe a honey something or other sort of chicken wing as well. I still find that awesome, though. They just come by, drop some food off. <laughs> You, you, must, like, you must be a good neighbor, Joe, for them to yeah. do that. I'm I'm the I'm the single neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they must, um, nobody just brings food to their house for no reason, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's like, awesome, man. That, that is so cool. That I mean, yeah, the other doorbell scared the hell out of me. So yeah, that that was that was yeah. I, I know I need I'm I should have got a fork prior to sitting down because the, this pasta is just staring at me in the face. And I can do nothing about it. These little cream cheese things are fantastic. I mean, they're brilliant. Look at that. Oh, oh, hey, oh man. Look at that. that. See, just just eat all the finger food first, and then tilt the plate down your throat. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. save, save a little bit of the finger food so you can scoop. <laughs> yeah. If I'm if I'm MacGyver enough, I could use one of these cured salted meat rolled cheese things to kind of scoop dab at the pot yeah like chopsticks almost yeah yeah <laughs> kind of scoop the pasta into said mouth right yeah yeah or i could okay. use the bones from the chicken wings that's a good to kind of chopstick my yeah. way into it right yeah. mm. Mm. primitive yeah. but still works right primitive but effective yeah, but effective right efficient very efficient <laughs> it's it's the green way to eat right Mm -hmm. Not wasting water. anything here. You don't gonna waste any water cleaning anything? Yeah, nothing. It's Good. very, very green. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. hilarious. Yeah, this is <clears throat> so <clears throat> we got coach in here that said happy Super Bowl Day, which is very right. Now I'm kind of interested. Is anybody at first, you know, in the early part of the week? There was a lot of media saying, you know, the Super Bowl is kind of, yeah, you know, kind of not really a lot of stories about it. You're not hearing a lot of buzz about it, not a lot, of, a lot of excitement about it. By the end of the week, I started buying into it, and I'm like, you know what? I don't really hear anything. I'm not hearing any buzz. I'm not hearing, feeling any sort of particular anything. Is there, is anybody else with me on that? Well, I've intentionally tuned out all the, just like you said, <laughs> that's why we're all here, so we don't have to watch the pregame show. I've tuned out all the 
long <laughs> garbage. I will watch the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so I if there's any buzz or not any buzz, I'm not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't heard it. There's usually something kind of semi-controversial or something comes up, and there really isn't. Yeah. Other the than only Tom thing, Brady, you know, he's he's amazing for being as old as he is and being as good as he is, and you know, whatever. So. And our MVP, yeah. and he yeah. just broke another record, the oldest MVP in the league ever. Yeah. And he didn't even go to the awards. He was in his hotel. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I got so many of those things. I sent my guy down there to get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm so used to awards now. I just sent my guy. I got, I got an official award collecting guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the way, he happens to be a, a decent receiver. You know. Yeah. So, you know. Mark, you were asking earlier about – I heard you say ask me about James Harrison, but I couldn't hear uh... – yeah, I'm watching the pregame, and they were interviewing James Harrison, who is mm -hmm. now – a Patriot. So I didn't see the whole interview, but he was like, "Oh yeah, I, I pretty much had a job to do, and I'm glad to be here." Blah blah blah. So, blah yeah. blah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's pretty much getting fitted for his ring as we speak. Yeah. 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 No, don't say that. Don't say that. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. No, let's let's do say that. Maybe we. We'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> yeah, Bum's like, no, uh, uh, no, we're saying that. We just, as a matter of fact, did say that. Yeah, no, it's no, in the no. transcript. I'm yeah. gonna say yeah. It's probably an automatic Patriots win, which it probably will be. Okay, we're now that it may not. Happen. Okay, we are. Uh what are we? An hour away from the start of this bad boy. What, what is kickoff, Mark? Is it uh, thirty? Right. Yeah, six thirty. It's six thirty. So we're another yeah, hour and twenty minutes away from the start of this bad boy. And I did see two Bud Knight commercials. One where he was talking to Patriots fans, and the other one he was talking to Eagles fans. He really a little, oh, no. a little, a little poem oh, about awesome. Patriots fans and Eagles fans. So He's I've seen okay. Bud Knight twice. It's all so, decked out, right? And all, and let's all. get this on the record. We've got head coach. We've got. I don't know if Craig's got an opinion. We've got head coach. We've got Earth in there. We've got Adam, uh, and then of course we've got us in the actual show here. Who's got who for the game? Uh, uh, Bum, do, do you want to pick your winner? Um, I'm as as painful as it is for me to say this, as it is for most people from Pittsburgh. It pains us to say this, but most people from Pittsburgh do want Philadelphia to win for one because. Obvious reasons, Patriots are right. the Steelers' enemies, and obviously because this, uh, with a win tonight, the Patriots would equal the Steelers with six Super Bowl wins. But the the I, I think the thing is with Philly, nobody in Pittsburgh hates the team itself. It's the Philly fans. It's the Philadelphia fans who are just yeah. known as some of the most detestable fans. Oh yeah, and. <laughs> They don't want to see. They have no problem with seeing the team win, but they uh, most people want to see the team lose because they hate they hate the fans so bad. But you cannot root for the Patriots if you're a Steelers fan. So you begrudgingly have to root for the Eagles in this game. So I'm rooting for the Eagles. Um, I'm I'm a little distracted by the smells that are coming from this. <laughs> Playing right now. I mean, it's like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just all of a sudden have this, you know, like an aura. Aura, this potpourri of grillness happening. <laughs> potpourri of grillness. You know, um, but yeah, no, I, I completely get that. You know, the thing about Philly, though, once you go to Philly, it's just such a good, like, blue-collar food town. You know what I'm saying? Like, God, Philly, it just has, like... Sure, the city itself, nothing wrong with the city and the food. Right, right. Yeah, it's, that, it's just the fans of the sports teams. Right, right. How, how just horrible they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it looks like Adam... Is an Eagles fan because he's he's the fly Eagles fly guy in the chat there. So yeah, we, we kind of have an idea where he's going. Mark, wh wh who are you rooting for for the game? Who would you like to win at least? 
Oh, oh okay. I see where he's going. All right. He, Pennsylvania. He, his yeah, heart is in a, Pennsylvania. So. He's bummed. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a true blue Steelers fan. I mean, at at the core. So yeah, yeah I've got to I've got to root I've got to root for the Eagles if only to beat the Patriots. Yeah. So. Dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. We haven't dilly dilly yet. I've dilly got dilly. my glass here and dilly dilly. <laughs> it is the official dilly dilly holiday, especially this. It's a, a twenty four ounce Yingling. Is it really? Wow. I, you know what? I wish I could get that beer because it was the one time I've had it, it was fantastic. It was. I think it's a really good beer. It was one of those that, if it were in my area, it would be in my fridge regularly. You know, it's a nice looking beer too. It is. It looks fantastic. Look at that. When you come here, Joe, hopefully you can take some back with you. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would definitely uh, do that. Take one of the, uh, take one of the, uh, the check bags and just fill it up with beer. Take it back. Uh, we've got, <clears throat> let me see, Dave Smith. Whoa, Dave's in there. Dave? Wow, Dave. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm seeing Dave. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave says, I'm pretty sure the script for the game is available on WikiLeaks. <laughs> ah, that's great. Yeah. And Earth says, uh, I have no team, but anyone other than the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, Tom, who who are you rooting for in the game? Well, uh, spoiler, no, no spoilers, no spoilers. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, no spoiler. With bated breath. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like it, it becomes a culture. Crazy <laughs> enough, this is the eighth Super Bowl I've watched Tom Brady playing. Yeah, over the last 15, 16 years, and it's like this. It's 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 been the same thing his whole entire career. If you can get to the quarterback, you're gonna win. Mm-hmm. If they can get to Tom Brady, they're going to win. It's just the way it is. And mm-hmm. that's simple enough. It sounds very simple, but just get to the quarterback, and you're going to win. It's, the, more, <clears throat> the more times he's running around, Tom Brady can't run around. Just get to the quarterback, and you're going to win. They have a good defense. I, I mean, so If you can't do that, they're going to run all over him. They're going to they're going to – it's going to be an easy game for him. Yeah, it's the the Patriots are well. Let me see. We've got Craig in here. I see a player singing that in a press conference on <laughs> the other day. It was shocking. Uh, so I would assume singing "Dilly Dilly" maybe or. <laughs> what do we have for final scores? What do people think for final scores? I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. The Patriots have not won a Super Bowl. By mm-hmm. more than even a yeah. touchdown, I don't think. Yeah, their last one, I think, it was a touchdown. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was an overtime. I think on average, their their the, the their margins of victory have been like three or four points. Yeah, literally. Yeah, they they don't cover, and that's that's the the problem with the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Their their Super Bowls are all close games. Um, they don't score mm-hmm. the first quarter. That's their problem. They don't come out and score. Yeah, there's a lot of <clears throat> filling out period and all that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I, I I really think the Patriots are just going to do it, man. It's yeah. just hard. You know what? It's the Eagles first for so many other players, for so many other coaching staff. It's their first time even being there. And there's a there's an awe factor that goes into just being there. For the Patriots, just like Tom said, <clears throat> it's it's old hat. I mean, these guys, it's still a, it's still a stunner. You've still got some mm-hmm. players that have not been there, so it's still going to be a stunner in some aspects. But when you've got so many veterans, from the coaches, yeah. from your from your starting quarterback, that are just this is old hat. We've been here, you know, more than half a dozen times. Uh, you know, this is this is how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've got some guidance there on for for some of the rookies on how to ha- how to handle it, and uh, and I mean, this is how we do things going into it, and this is how you conduct yourself. And man, that all that stuff matters, yeah. you know. I mean, you look at the quarterback that's at Philly right now. He's you kind of have to pay respects to him because he's in the same situation Brady was in at his first. Yeah. Yeah, against the Rams. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I should be hating on the Patriots. But at this point, 
He's, um, he's the big time, just like the Patriots are going against the Rams. Yeah, it's who knows. Like if he wins, all you got you got to respect him because he's he could be the future. Mm-hmm. I can't hate on him for for winning a game. We've won. We've he has five Super Bowl rings. If yeah. he retires now, he'll be happy. He'll be happy. Did anybody see that thirty for thirty uh, Bill Bill versus Bill or Bill on Bill or something like that? It just came out a few days ago. Oh, is that Bill Parcells and Belichick? Oh, it. I, I it, didn't watch it. I heard about it. If you're a fo- see, I'm I'm just a hardcore football guy. Period. When it comes down to it. I love football. I, I I love the greats. I love the legends. And when you actually are in the period of living legends, like we are with Belichick and Brady, mm-hmm. I just embrace it. I'm I'm done after that last Super Bowl. The way they came back on Atlanta and and beat Atlanta, I, I'm just done. It's just I'm just enjoying what I'm seeing now. I just <clears throat> I took a whole different uh approach to it now and i'm just i now during the season i kind of love to kind of hate on them a little bit <laughs> but once i hit the playoffs again you're like <laughs> this is nuts man and, and then once the rams were out of it now then i was really like okay I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy the ride i mean in in order to be the best you got to beat the best while they're the best and I'm just enjoying the best like when muhammad ali was the greatest i just enjoyed it when Tiger Woods was the greatest, I just enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Michael Jordan is only great when I never enjoyed. I didn't. I hated Jordan. I hated. How about Jordan. when he came back for the Wizards? Did you kind of? No, I am not. I am a Magic Johnson guy, diehard Laker guy. So, yeah, that was not. <laughs> no, I was anti Jordan, man. Oh yeah, no, that was because now I come from that generation, Tom. That's just like you with the football, with the Patriots. Yeah, uh, the Lakers were just always great, and and yeah. and back then, uh, if you were my age back then, you would have been the same opinion with with the Celtics. You know, it you're just used to greatness. You're just used to it. You know, so you, you get, this, get other, this other, you know, this, you know, other, this other guy, guy from Chicago. Chicago. And Chicago like, hadn't wow. done squat to that point. You have to remember, Chicago was nothing. You're like, okay, they got Jordan. And it took Jordan a long time to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it took him a while. So, so <clears> it, it was like, eh, this guy, you know, screw that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was, you know. I, I just was a diehard Laker guy. That was it. You know? He was great, though. He was mean. He was great. He was. He was. You can't away from anything he's did, what he's done. Yeah. It, it, now, in hindsight, I can appreciate him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> because you, you have to, you know, back in the day, that, that that's when I lived in LA and I grew up in LA as a kid, and and you know, you would get magic coming to the park that was across the street from my house oh, where awesome. I grew up at. And giving one day clinics literally only for the kids in that neighborhood. Like if you were from outside of that neighborhood, uh, no soup for you. You know what I'm saying? Like it was literally for the kids in that neighborhood, and yeah. it, it was just so bomb. Uh, uh, I had other Laker players come to my school and give clinics at my school, and you know, awesome, it, it, it was just like you know, you had Rams players coming to the school and my mom as a hairdresser did uh hair for some of the uh players wives and you know the players back then uh for the rams would you know had had jobs in the off season all that sort of thing so some of the secretaries and stuff like that would get their hair done by my mother you know what i'm saying uh and 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 to get autographs uh from their boss and all this sort of thing was 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 are you kidding me you grow up in that environment i mean that's just your it's still in me you can still hear it it's still it's still a part of me you know what i'm saying it's still uh the the great dodger players you name it man uh you know say garvey uh you name it i mean they oops yeah i mean lopes yeah exactly like it it, it's just a party, you know, throwing a ball to Steve Garvey and Steve Garvey throws it back and you catch it 
Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those are my memories, man. You know what I'm saying? You think you're a fan? Like, that's – once those sort of things happen to you in your life, like, that is it. You know what I'm saying? I have memories of catching a Spalding and bounce passing it back to Magic. How many other people have that memory? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, this, these Especially things the happen. Young. These things happened. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Can you imagine a kid now bounce? You know, you're on a court and you get a bounce pass from LeBron and you toss it up and come on, you're a LeBron fan forever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, those are my memories as a kid, man. Th those players in their height would come, you know, to the inner city kids. You know, in those gang infested areas and all that sort of thing, trying to, you know, bring up those neighborhoods, man. And so that's why I'm such a huge Rams fan, such a huge Dodger fan. You know, I'm a fan of all those teams. Mm -hmm. Some of the yeah. best, some of the best talent comes out of the neighborhoods you're from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's some of the best yeah. talent in the country, the areas that people don't get that chance where they want to give that people the chance. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that's where a lot of those, a lot of the players <clears throat> now and in even even in the generation before, you know, are, are you know, grew up <clears throat> with those same sort of experiences that I have, similar at least. And, and, and you know, it just, it, it, it's like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And it really, if I was as gifted an athlete, that might have, <laughs> you know, it maybe sparked a, a, a different way for me, you know, a different path, but who knows, you know what I'm saying? Um, I did love boxing. I just, my mom wouldn't let me box, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, who knows? Cause boxing, uh, you know, my, my, my grandfather is a golden gloves boxing champion. So oh, wow. who, who knows? But she wouldn't let me box. I, uh, there was a lot of champions that came out of my neighborhood for boxing. Boxing yeah. was a big, big, big thing in my neighborhood. Big thing. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. About 30, 30 miles from here. We had um, Rocky Marciano. Coming out of Brockton, Mass. Oh, oh wow. I that didn't was, know that. Oh, that was a big boy. He used to. Uh, There's like legend stories about him running 50 miles from Brock Brockton to Providence, <laughs> back to Brockton. Mm -hmm. Some of those old timers, some of those old time boxers. Man, yeah. That, now, see, that was the beauty of Albuquerque. Now, I wasn't born and raised in Albuquerque, but boy, I really embraced the culture there. Boxing was a huge thing in Albuquerque, and you had. Uh, Johnny Tapia, who was a, you know, a boxing, if you're really, really into boxing, Johnny Tapia was a huge boxing guy. I mean, he was a champion. I forget in what weight class now, but boy, he really embraced that. He was all over Albuquerque. If you'd never met Johnny Tapia and you lived in, in, um, Albuquerque when he was alive, I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. You probably didn't get out much because he was all over the place. Like, you know. <laughs> Uh, ah, he he would he would do public workouts and stuff like that, but he would get out in the community a lot, oh, a yeah. lot. And then he had a little romance. He, that's what he would call it. His mistress. He had a thing with cocaine, and that was you know he had a drug addiction. That was his uh, you know heroin and cocaine. That was his. He was very public about it. You know that was his mistress, and uh, that was the devil on the shoulder, right? Yeah. That's that was his undoing, but at the same time, you had Johnny Romero, he was another champion from Albuquerque. So, these two champions at the same time, different weight classes, but they they were very, very out in the community. Very, and then once you had Holly Holm, who before her fame of beating that other gal in in the uh, in the in mixed martial arts, uh, she was a boxing champion in Albuquerque and she would get out a lot. Yeah, so, all these champion fighters in Albuquerque. Uh, would get out a lot in the community and were a big, big, big part of the community. Many people hang out, hung out with them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all those sorts of things. It was, you know, since Albuquerque is a much smaller place, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to say, it's a lot easier to get out and about and meet a lot of people in Albuquerque. It's about right. closer knit than like Phoenix or Boston or something like that. Right, or LA. Right, exactly. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, but that was. <clears throat> Yeah, so anyway, a long-winded way of saying, yeah, I wasn't really a, a Jordan fan growing up. Um, 
uh, you know, but that, that's that because of my deep seated roots with magic. I was just a magic guy. And then when all that stuff happened with magic and AIDS, oh. HIV, uh, and, and some of the comments from some of the NBA players and, oh, that didn't sit well with me. Carl Malone, mm -hmm. uh, my big yin and yang with Carl Malone was when he made all these comments about Magic Johnson and him getting HIV. And what did he uh, say about him? Did he not want to play with him on, on the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. There was a list of them, too. No, there was a bunch of players. Yeah. Didn't they say they didn't want to, like, if there was a collision, they didn't, he would bleed? And, uh, right. I remember there that. Was a oh, huge, yeah. huge, huge yeah. fear with AIDS and HIV back in the day. And it, that's around <clears throat> Freddie Mercury got it, right? Around that yeah. same time. What yeah, and that? then you had the boxer. It was it was Magic Johnson, and then you had that white boxer, Tommy something or other, Tommy. Uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, Tommy Gunn or something like that. He was from Oklahoma, wasn't he? Yeah. Gee, what was his name? I know who it is. Yeah, he was that. a big name. Uh, was he in Rocky? I don't think was it was, was it like an Rocky? Irish was it an Irish last name? <sighs> he was a bigger guy. I mean, thicker. You know what I'm saying? I think he was yeah. a heavyweight. I want to say he was in a Rocky movie. Yeah, man. Because really? he was in a movie, and that's kind of what got him his popularity. He, he was already coming up in the boxing ranks. And then, yep. and then he, I, th I want to say he was in Rocky or one of the Rocky Tommy, movies. Tommy Morrison. Morrison. Yeah. Boom. That's Big it. Boy. Thank yeah. you, Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was and, in Rocky Five. Yeah, and Magic Magic made his announcement, and then Morrison made his announcement right after that, and then they both announced not together, but in in different uh, uh, news uh, news press releases that that they both were getting a cure or both getting treatment, and they wouldn't die, which was unusual at that point. Because at that point, any it was like a death sentence. Yeah, you were yeah. diagnosed with it. That was it for you, son. That was you the were... first thing with magic. It was like, okay, magic is gonna die. Yeah, it was. I, I mean, when magic made that announcement, it was he was yeah. he wasn't too far away from retiring anyway. Let's be clear. Yeah, it was within a couple years, probably. Yeah, <clears throat> he wasn't too far away. But I can remember just being like, like my heart sunk. You were like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, I picture Michael Jordan. Picture Michael Jordan. Uh, all of a sudden, saying he had H. Like, it was it was a big big deal, man. And yeah, and you, you had players saying that they didn't want to be on the same court with him, and all this sort of thing. He was kind of pressured. He still had a few years left, and he was pressured into retirement. Um, and the big thing was he was already retired. And the big thing was he came back for the All Star game. Yeah, he was, he was permitted to come back for the All Star game, and he played an All Star game and was great. I think I think all the players played for once in the All Star game too. It was a really good All Star game. Uh, he had a great game, and Carl Malone was still out there on that island, man. Still like, yeah. <laughs> he was a jerk, man. Oh, so the big thing for me was when Carl Malone, and years later, decides to come to the Lakers. If you remember. He played uh, that one season trying to get a championship, and they and they didn't make it with Kobe. Uh, it was a, it was a big thing for me when he came to the Lakers. I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I forgot uh, that he even went to the Lakers. Mm -hmm. That was for a very brief moment, right? Yeah, that's what I was. It was just that one season. Just yeah, the one season, the end of his career, basically. Yeah, yeah he t he he got. Base pay for the for the NBA. I, I think at the time it was, I don't know, three hundred thousand or three hundred fifty thousand, something like that. He took the base pay. It wasn't about the money. Uh, and at the at the time, there was a lot of reasons for me to love Carl Malone, and I actually did admire him in some aspects because he was a big. Uh, Carl Malone's actually a hard worker, son of a gun. Oh uh, yeah. Not not only did he have a fantastic NBA career in a fantastic build and all that sort of thing. But he, he had many, many businesses and was very active in those businesses. And at the time, uh, he had a very successful trucking company. And with me being a truck driver at that time, I had a lot of reasons to really admire Carl Malone. A lot of truck drivers at the time in the off season would 
would tell stories about how they would run into Carl Malone at a truck stop somewhere randomly or at mm -hmm. uh, delivering somewhere because he would, in his off season, would jump in a truck and deliver freight. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's when they were making good money. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with his, I think he was born and raised in Louisiana initially. And so with his background as, as being a poor guy, you know, raised with that sort of working mentality, he's always been a really, uh, you know, working guy. So there was a lot of reasons to really admire him, but my thing went all the way back to Magic Johnson. So, uh, in all the comments he made, so when he finally became a Laker with Kobe trying to, trying to get a championship finally, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was, it was a tough one for me, but you know, I ended up rooting for him and stuff, but, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of history there, isn't it? I'm surprised I even remembered all that junk, but, uh, yeah, that's a trip, but you can remember, huh? Like, uh, yeah, that's, that, that was a long time ago already, wasn't it? I but, wasn't. Uh, even, I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the stuff was oh, no, but Carl Malone, yeah, in the nineties, yeah, yeah, but with like mm -hmm. Freddie Mercury and in, in mid nineties. Uh, some of the stuff with you know, I, I don't no, think I'm he lying. I'm lying. I lied. Like I lied. 90s. Did he? Yeah, I lied. Um. So eh, you know, but <clears throat> so in any case. <clears throat> I'll be I won't be rooting for the Patriots, but I'm kind of expecting them to win. To, you know. Mm. It's gonna be I think it's gonna be closer than people think. Yeah, oh yeah. It's gonna be closer. Mm -hmm. than I, I agree. I think that it's gonna be a close game one way or the other. It's the Super Bowl. Be. It's it's it's, it's just mm -hmm. Patriots never score in the first quarter. If if they do score in the first quarter, I think it's gonna be a little different. But if it's the same thing that was always been, it's gonna be a close one. Yeah. yeah, it's weird because for years, um, and Mark and Bum might remember this was Super Bowl. For many years, it was a blowout. It was it, Super Bowl wasn't worth watching because it was just it was the yeah, NFC well, blowing out whatever AFC team was going to be in the game. It and for many there. years, I d I didn't watch on account of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Broncos. Yeah. Yeah, the Broncos lose you know, those Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. You know, San Francisco is going to beat the snot out of whoever they were playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, it was just it, you know, you name the NFC team. The NFC was so dominant for so many. Uh, what, what was it like? Fifteen years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Most of the '80s and the early '90s. Mm. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was a long time. And so you 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 back up till now, and you take as long as the Patriots have dominated uh, and and had this this run. It's it's been quite the switch, you know. Uh, they play it. There's at least a good game. It seems like both teams get a good game in. Yeah, well, when I mean, I'm, well, look at it. I mean, Atlanta last year started out. Right. I mean, th there was so many. I feel like personally, just just in my personal experience with the people that that I hear or talk to or whatever in my area, it, it, it I don't really hear much buzz. Like even last year, there was just so much patriot hate going on. Mm. Like oh, Atlanta, and Atlanta had so much, like so many people rooting for him, so much energy. Um, yeah. And and now it just I, I feel like other people have just kind of succumbed to the Patriots thing, just like yeah, the Eagles. Uh, you the already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After after the way that the that the Atlanta Falcons lost last year, it's like it's it's yeah. hard when they come at what were they twenty seven points down twenty eight. Yeah. It, it was like it was bad. I, 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 win. Wait, oh, because <laughs> Atlanta came out there like barn burners, man. You were like, whoa, on both sides of the ball, they were just they were confusing Brady on defense and on offense. They were just a machine, man. I mean, they were getting on the field and scoring in like a matter of seconds. It felt like, yeah. 
plays, uh, bang, done. Yeah. It was, that it was, first half was just like, are you kidding me? And even into the third quarter, you're like, okay, the Patriots are going to come out there and they're going to they're going to readjust, and you're kind of used to that. Yeah. But they came out in the third quarter and it was still this. You're like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And then <laughs> it was yeah, like, uh, they, they got a touchdown, and you're like, oh, okay, Uh-oh, so the game the game's on now. Yeah, this year it's just you know I. You know, I just don't feel that same. I don't feel the same energy, that same patriot hate. It's just like, oh, well, you uh, got maybe you know, uh, but I feel it. Baby. There's a lot of hate against the Patriots. It's like uh, people on Facebook. They'll put like, uh, I remember when those was four teams left. Mm-hmm. One second. One second. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel it though. I personally don't. I don't think it's as 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 strong. As even last year, no. Yeah, you'll you'll get the people that like they'll, on Facebook post they'll put like like when it was the four teams like I said they'll put like all the four teams and then playing against the Patriots they'll put the referees, you know what I mean? To like things like that. <laughs> what, what I'm interested to know what you think, Mark. You're in the Atlanta area where tragedy hit last year. What's what's the vibe that you're getting from the people you're in touch with? You know, well, a lot of people are just like. They just want to see you no. Know, they just want to see the Patriots lose. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> after, and they're just showing a thing on the pregame now about the Patriots come back against Atlanta last year. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean the the vibe here is whoever anybody that can beat the Patriots is our favorite right now. You know, so yeah, I, I think the majority of people here are rooting for uh, Philadelphia. It's like yeah. the Yankees in the nineties or the early two thousands. Yeah. Yep. Now, now, did we? Now, everybody else has an animal prediction. Did we get Crusher's opinion on who Crusher thinks who's going to win yeah, the Super Bowl? <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah, you know, because the animals have this thing already figured out. We, we there's like stats on that stuff, right? You're a real snoozer. What do you think? What do you say, Crush? Eagles or Patriots? <laughs> Well, I see Look at those there. eyes, man. Huh? He's like, right, let's see what AJ wants. What, what do you think, AJ? Uh, or Eagles. AJ, nah, he's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> cats are like, leave cats, me alone. Cats are like, yeah, whatever, dude. Patriots. I ain't playing your game. Huh? What do you think? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We have, we have two cats. No decision. So yeah, no decision. Yeah, cats are just they're 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 different animals, aren't they? They're just I mean, like they you know what. Birds. So I mean, they're closer to birds than they are to patriots. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe they're going with the eagles. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, yeah. I get you could you could put words in the cat's mouth, right? Because cats like to eat birds, mm-hmm. and and birds are you know eagles are birds. Yeah. Uh, but you can then you can look at the Patriots have guns and the birds be flying and we'd be, you know what I'm saying? We'd be shooting at the birds. Yeah, yeah. or you could look at it like eagles are big enough birds where cats are bird food. <laughs> <laughs> have an eagle come down and take take one of the cats up. Yeah, yeah cats good. cats get picked up by eagles regularly. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, eagles are bigger than hawks, and hawks, I've seen hawks just mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. are lunch, my friend, <laughs> and that is like, you know, bye-bye we, kitty cat. We, you see know? Red t- we see red-tailed hawks around here, and I mean, they could pick up a, you know, they could pick up a 10-pound yeah. cat pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, when I, when I, um. Uh, was a, a greater operator for uh, the county in, in Bernalillo over there in New Mexico. Uh, I'd sit up there in the mountains and watch the hawks fly, and you'd be like, oh, look at that hockey circling around. He's swarming for food. And then you're like, <laughs> you know, because I'm not real familiar with a lot of wildlife like a lot of people are. They're raised in rural areas like, you know, New Mexico or that. You know, I was born and raised in L.A. There ain't a lot of hawks in L.A. So... <laughs> You know, I'd be sitting there just enjoying, you know, like, oh, yeah, look at that. He's circling around. 
Hey, why is that hog diving like that? Hey, look at that kitty cat. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess that cat, you know, and then after a while of being in the mountains up there taking care of those dirt roads and those gravel roads for those people, they're always looking for cats. And you're like, why are you always looking for cats? Well, we need the cats to eat the mice and the cats get eaten by the hawks <laughs> you know so there's this They're there's cool. this evolution that's always happening you know what i'm mm. saying there's a there's a turnover there you know uh so so what's the word what what would what, what would you say what on a one to five scale bum how's that DiGiorno working out now what toppings do we have on that DiGiorno? we need a DiGiorno report yeah <laughs> It came from the factory with uh, sausage and pepperoni on it, two of my three favorite toppings. Okay. And I called an audible just before I put it in the oven to use a football term. I threw some jalapenos on it. Oh, Ooh. pickled or fresh? Pickled right out of the, out of the jar. Right out of the jar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, when it comes to a pickled jalapeno, is there a particular favorite or just kind of any sort of general jarred or canned jalapeno will do? Um, actually, as far as the jarred goes, um, I prefer the generic local store brand uh, called Essential Everyday Sliced <laughs> That is That is the brand name. It don't get more generic than that, right, Mark? Like you've That's got essential so everyday jalapeno. They sell those in the local um, uh, Coons and Shop and Save stores. Those are the, that's like the house brand for both of those stores. That is hilarious. And man. I actually prefer those over the uh, Vlasic and Mount Olive and some of the other uh, mm -hmm. name brands. Yep. All okay, right, Joe, so, are you going to try these uh, Blaze? I've got a bag of Blaze oh. sitting here. Okay, yeah, let me let me go get my bag. My bag is over there in the pantry, which will allow me to get some more ice for the last, uh, you know, so I can have another, uh, so I can have another drink ready to go in case these are super, super hot. <laughs> um, well, it's like licking a volcano is what it says on the bag, so I don't know. Well, the last time I licked a volcano, it didn't work out so good for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but maybe this time it'll be okay. I'll lick a volcano and, and I'll live to see another day. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So I'll get my bag. I'll yep. get uh, some more ice for my glass. I've got enough. My, my Diet Coke to Kraken ratio is pretty good. So I just need more ice and I'll be right back. You guys entertain each other. Talk some of yourself. Oh, yeah. So That's what I got. I think I'm the only one that never got around between a Joe and you and Zach and Tom. I'm the only one that never got around to what I'm drinking tonight. Oh. Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald. Oh, that's a good one. I, I picked up I picked up a six-pack uh, on the way home after work specifically for use on this show. That that's an excellent. I've had that a few times and super super good. Can't go wrong. No, a good basic quarter. But that's one of the best. Well, I have the chance to tell you here. I bought it at Mo. Do you know Mohan's? It's in it's it where I live in Penn Hills. It's a fairly famous bar restaurant. Fried chicken no, is their big thing. They yeah. um they opened up a six pack shop probably about ten years ago, and until they changed the laws. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff in Giant Eagle and then in distributors. Mohan's became my go-to place for six packs and single bottles. Okay. And um, I've mentioned them on the show a few times, not by name, but by the fact that a place that I go to sells stale beers. Mm -hmm. That's Mohan's. When I went in there today, they had single bottles. At first, I was shocked. I saw single bottles of Anchor Christmas beer 2015, still in their single shelf. <laughs> and then I went a couple coolers down. They had Samuel Smith, Winter Warmer, the Merry Christmas, Happy New Year 
uh, or the what they call the uh, Samuel Smith winter warmer beer. 2013, 2014, they had four year old Samuel Smith winter beer on their, and believe me, they're not passing them as off, uh, passing them off as vintage aged beers. They're just passing them off as regular beers that anybody can buy. And God they knows in, they were in the cooler, which means they haven't been in a cooler for the previous four years. So they're probably sitting in the back room for three and a half years. Yeah. I can only imagine what they taste like now. Yeah, probably not real good. Oh, I should have got a napkin. Let me get a no. towel or something. Mm -hmm. I had this before the England. Oh, from Oscar Blues. Okay, I I think I've tried that once. It's a really good Scotch ale. It says it's like Sputnik on the can. It's like Sputnik. Old Chubb is I don't know. Sputnik? Yeah, Old Chubb is Sputnik, I guess. I'm trying to make the connection here, and I... I don't know. I guess it's so good. A virtual planetoid on the other side. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. So that says something I, on the bottom. Chubba Wubba. Chubba Wubba. And on nine twenty five seventeen. Chubba Wubba is at the bottom of the can. So I, no. still can't still can't make any Sputnik connections there. No, I okay. uh, Scott Jalen Sputnik. Uh, so I've got. The Kraken in here, you can see how high this is. Yeah. The, the, okay. uh, the nice. Joe D glass, I'll call it, I guess, since it's the one okay. I think. Um, I'm gonna pour some feisty cherry in here since that seems to be my preferred mix of Diet Coke. Huh? Not as much Diet Coke as I had hoped. Eh, I'll kind of fill the rest with this orange. Yeah, live on the wild side. Oh yeah, and that's still not enough. But yeah, whatever. So Taco Bell commercial. Oh my gosh, I got that going. I've got a pint of milk that I bought from my oh, local dairy. This man. is just in case. This is the glass, uh, uh, pint glass milk jug from Danzing Dairy here in the Phoenix area. In case anybody. Uh, so this is whole milk uh, from there. I got a fork. So, I am ready with said plate of food. There is plenty of protein on here. So, I'm, I've got the protein part covered. <laughs> so, I've got a towel, not a napkin. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a, okay, so, I've got the fluids covered. Oh, yeah. So, here's the bag. Blaze, baby. Blaze. Blaze. So, let me... No. If it's if you will indulge me here, let me like crunch. Let me let me let me let me dial this up here, Mark. Uh, Intense flavor eruption. That's I want to I want to show everybody uh, if I can uh, share the screen and show everybody what what we're about to do. Yeah, this is so, not quite. Hockey chip challenge, but you know, it's yeah, it's enough. I think it's Doritos answer to the one chip challenge. Yeah, I think it is. So let me see. Here, here's the nutritional facts of Blaze. Okay. Yep. So here we go. We've got let me see if I can make this bigger for you. It doesn't horrible. look like it's happening. Oh, it um, does have monosodium glutamate, which is a bonus. It's got MSG. That's good. Ooh. So the ingredients are corn, vegetable oil, and it breaks down to sunflower, corn, and or canola oil. Uh, what is that? Malt, malt ox. There you yeah. go. Made from corn, natural and artificial flavors, salt, sugar, dex. What is that? Dextose, right? Dextrose. Yeah. Spices, garlic powder, uh, mono sodium glutamate. Right. That's a good uh, stuff. Yeah, onion good. powder, tomato powder, jalapeno powder, artificial color, red 40 lake, hello, and modified cornstarch, okay? Uh, serving size is about 12 chips. We're looking at 140 calories, and yeah. you can break down the rest of the uh, nutritional facts right there. And, and um, I noticed the, the Scoville units are not listed anywhere on there, which they should. No, there are no Scoville units. <laughs> No Scoville units listed 
we've got the Doritos brand is all about boldness. If you're up to the challenge, grab a bag of Doritos tortilla chips and get ready to make some memories. You won't soon forget. It's a, a bold experience in snacking and beyond, baby. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. So that's the that's the nutritional facts. Is there anything else I can get for you? Two fifty at Walmart. So uh -huh. if you get to your local Walmart. You can find these bad boys. Eleven seventy five. Mine were, mine were three dollars and seventy nine cents. Yeah, you know what? Mine were more expensive. Mine yeah. on the bag. I'm gonna show you right here on my bag. Right. Look at that. On my bag, it shows four something, baby. Look at that. Yeah. Four twenty nine on well, the mine bag. Shows Nine and my and my local store had it for three three fifty or something like that. Yeah, something like that for me as well. So, okay, Mark, are you all set? Here we go, man. This is the share a beer pregame show right here, bringing it to you. Doritos <laughs> Blaze Challenge, man. Yeah. Here we go. You ready, Mark? We're opening bag. Okay. What what are you getting from the smell right away? <laughs> yeah. that just, that's smelling a little spicy i'm getting jalapeno i'm getting like a fresh kind of jalapeno note actually like when mm -hmm. you roast jalapenos you know when you first put a jalapeno on mm -hmm. on your burner at home or on the mm -hmm. grill that initial smell that opening the bag now the smell's dying away now yeah but it was like a, yeah, like a fire roasted kind of. Yeah, and then now, now that the bag's been open, how many seconds now? It's <laughs> that that is dying off, and you're getting more of a traditional Dorito sort of smell. Over here, yeah. That's. Are you getting? Right. You getting similar right. stuff? Okay, here yeah. we go. Pick a chip. Here we go. There's the chip. There's One the chip. chip out of the bag. Look at that yeah. big fire right roast bad boy. Look at that thing. There we are. You can see the spices on it. Here's the other side. That thing, that thing is loaded with monosodium glutamate. <laughs> MSG for the win. Dude, now now how many how many points on the man card do we get for this? I don't know. Is there, is there any comments in the chat room we need to be aware of? Any sort of um I think you realize how many points after you eat it. After um, you eat it. <laughs> okay, yeah. now smelling the chip, smelling the chip, I'm getting that same jalapeno sort of flavor. Are you, are, are you getting that same jalapeno note, Mark? Yeah, I'm getting a kind of a roasted, yeah, jalapeno. You no, know, oh, you know, I think this is this is New, this might not be New Mexico jalapenos. I think this might be Southeast Texas. <laughs> <laughs> now, now on my bag it says Frito Lay, Plano, Texas. Okay, so I'd say I'm pretty close. Plano, yeah. that's close to Dallas. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and it's now 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 to cover this, it says it's like a volcano. It's like licking a volcano. Intense flavor eruption. Uh, what is that? Cataclysmic crunch and amplified fiery heat. So here we go, Mark. You ready, man? We're ready. going in. This is the share of beer Doritos Blaze. Challenge with Mark and Joe. Here we go. Here we go. One, no. two, three. All right. I'm like I get lots of corn up front. It's yeah. definitely a corn chip front. Yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting a little heat coming in now. A little heat. All right. Nothing overwhelming. I'm getting a little more heat though. Yeah, a little more heat. But still corn corn forward. Roasted corn forward. Lots of crunchy chip. Dear God, I'm getting more heat. Oh, Pam, Pam says it builds. She's on chip three already. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we got the, we've got a food scientist and two amateurs at this thing right now. Yeah. We've got a food professional. Mm. I, I like the word scientist. It sounds better. We've got a food scientist in our. <clears throat> scientist. Damn it. Ab. Yeah. I just got. It's it's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming. I'm going in for chip two. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go chip two. I'm gonna go two. chip. I figure since it's such a big bag, it's not mm -hmm. gonna be nothing you can't handle. 
Okay, here we go. Yep, two. There we go. Um. Oh, by the way, it's a nine and yep. three quarter ounce bag. Yep, that's what I got too. 276.4 grams. Yep. So, you know what? They're not bad. No, um, they're, they're not. Yeah. It's like licking yeah. a baby volcano, maybe. Yeah. It's, there's some heat there. There's some if heat. You can't tolerate heat at all. If you're one of those people where, yeah, now you this know, is... you're like, you know what? I had jalapeno jelly one time and it was like hotter than hell. Then, yeah. yeah, this is probably going to be like get the milk ready, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, there's definitely some heat there. I, I'm thinking hot Cheetos are hotter than this. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to ask you how they compared to the flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah, I would think hot Cheetos are hotter. Than <laughs> I'm going to have some, I'm going to have some crackling, you know, but only because some cracking, only because I want some cracking, not because I can't handle the heat. But it is, it's there, but it's not nothing you can't handle. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, if you totally don't like any hot food at all, this is not the one to get. Right. But right. if you can, if you like putting a little bit of Frank's Red Hot on your food or something like that, yeah, this is this is right there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah, guys need to try the slap your mama hot sauce on your, yeah. you know, if you, <laughs> you don't like slap your mama hot sauce, this is probably not it. Now, Slap Your Mama in the early days was a huge fan of Jody's reviews. Mm -hmm. I actually met the owners of Slap Your Mama. They actually gave me Slap Your Mama gear. If you look in the early reviews of Slap of of my reviews, mm -hmm. not the Share Beer show, but the reviews, you'll see me wearing a yellow shirt that is Slap Your Mama. That was endorsed by Slap Your Mama Hot Sauce. They they actually had come to Albuquerque from Louisiana and became huge fans of the show and um, <clears throat> decked me down in tons of Slap Your Mama uh, gear. And I, of course, embraced the name so much. I named my Wi-Fi uh, network Slap Your Mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I loved it. I, I I loved the name. It was great. Hey guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go uh, start making some margaritas. Right? Yeah. It's it's we're we're about. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Patriots. Not Patriots. He's gonna prepare his his victory drinks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, good luck right. to you, Tom. Enjoy the game. Enjoy your margaritas. We'll see you, <laughs> brother. Thanks for jumping right. in, man. Appreciate it. See you, you know, Tom. Later. Bye. So, 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 what's the food scientist's opinion on the blaze? Let's find out. Instant opinion. They're not that bad. There you go. They're not that bad. <laughs> those, that, those sound like my beer tasting notes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking, after, I'm taking after Bum and Dave. <laughs> yeah. They're not that bad. No, they're not that bad. Yeah. So. They they definitely do, don't sound as hot as the Pocky Ghost Pepper chips that I've mentioned, the yeah. company that makes the one chip challenge chips. Right. But the yeah. Ghost Pepper yeah. chip are, like I said, oh. a lot of people I I've had try them after two chips are like, no, no more. They're too okay. Hot. I you know I would say, I don't know about Mark and the scientist. I would say. This is the political correct version of the one chip. Yeah, yeah. This is the mass market. Everybody can say they've had a blazing hot chip chip. Yeah. A little yeah. spicier than normal, but it's not anywhere close. It's not yeah. even like Tabasco sauce hot. Yeah. It's like no. Frank's Red Hot, slightly yeah. diluted. They're, they're not yeah. as hot as Flamin' Hot uh, Cheetos. If you've yeah. had those Flamin' Hot Cheetos, I, I would say those are hotter now. I've had the flaming hot Cheetos. My my um, mm -hmm. I know lots of kids that love them and that sort of thing. And I've I've snuck a few out of their bag and, whoo, they're hot, man. No, they actually make a hotter Cheetos now. I had a hard time finding them, but I, I only found them in a small bag. They're called Extreme Hot Cheetos, mm. and they are hotter than the flaming hot, but possibly not as hot as the Pocky Ghost Pepper Chips. 
Yeah. So, so how close are we getting now, Mark, to kickoff here? Um, 25 minutes. Okay. Going a shot of the locker room, everybody walking around, getting ready to go out on the field. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll go to uh, 610. Uh, we'll go to 610. We'll call it a show. Everybody get ready for your Super Bowl party, your Super Bowl show. Yep. Um, thank thank you. you for tuning in here. I'll go ahead and say that ahead of time. Yeah, Al Michaels just popped on the screen. So he's, okay, he's just so – Everybody's so. getting ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, what what commercials have you heard about that you're looking forward to? Let let's do that sort of thing before we you know before we get into cutting off here. Um, the one I've heard that I want to see is the um, the dual combo commercial with Morgan Freeman and uh, Peter Link Linklage, the uh, the guy who played uh, Tyrion Lannister. Oh. They're doing back to back for Blaze Chips and Mountain Dew. So apparently that's it's like two back to back commercials with each of them doing something. Oh wow. That's gonna be kinda cool. Yeah, that will be kinda cool. Mm -hmm. And and the bum, do you have any sort of commercial you're looking forward to? No. Um, I, I've always said I've been saying for decades. I only watch the Super Bowl for the game. I don't care for the window dressing, the pregame show, the halftime show, and I Honestly, usually don't care about the commercials. It usually just seems to be a bunch of uh, talking animals or talking babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but I will say this year, I may be a little bit curious about the uh, Budweiser commercials, just to yeah, just to yep. see the dilly dilly. But other than that, no, no real interest other than the game itself. Yeah. Yeah. It, now, now, last year's commercials. It, it, in my alone, last year's commercials were kind of a dud. They were real political, real politically correct. Mm -hmm. Just a total dud, you know? Yeah. Uh, there, the wasn't, there wasn't a buzz about before or after the commercials last year, it didn't seem like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Hopefully we get some that are a little more irreverent this year, you know, a little mm -hmm. edgier. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, you have to take some sort of chance. You know, you can't just. Um, yeah. You, you know, you can't just. Bucks, man, you might as well go out a little bit. Now, now, yeah. what is the latest on what they're paying? We've got what four minutes left, less than four minutes left till we till we cut off here. So, have you heard anything about what the cost of a half hour commercial, uh, half uh, a thirty second spot is now? Let's see. Google will tell us. Oh, uh, I heard it was like five million um, Super Bowl commercial price. Let's see. How much does it cost? Let's find out. <laughs> Where's Alexa? Ask Alexa. A thirty-second commercial is five million dollars this year. Oh wow! Is that the highest? That initial, you know, right around kickoff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just watching a commercial, a 60 second commercial for Mass Mutual Insurance. So that was whatever, nine or 10 million bucks, probably. Oh, that had to be real fun. Are, the, yeah. are there talking babies in it? Uh, no, there were just a bunch of people singing. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, they're not really playing the big, <clears throat> the big money commercials because no. it's pregame. So they're. These are the commercials that are they're trying to save a few bucks at the same time. They're yeah. trying to be on, but but save a few bucks at the save, same time. Save, save a few hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Oh, now Harry says, "Oh God, the first commercial. We welcome Muslims." Well, did you see any sort of we welcome? Yeah, Muslims? that was a mass mutual. That was a mass mutual. Stand by you or oh, was it know. really? Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, they had they had a little segment about helping the. Taking, you know, getting a um, everybody escort the bully, the bullied kid to school to face the bully. And now, Earth says uh, makes me want to do the hot ones challenge, the quote unquote hot ones challenge, chicken wing challenge. Mm. I have not heard of that one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that challenge. Yeah, 
We've got less than two minutes now before we cut off air and all join our local NBC affiliate for yes. a broadcast of the game. Um, we're here brought to you by NBC. Yeah, brought to you by NBC. Any sort of, <clears throat> uh, you know, is Al Michaels going to make a signful reference before halftime? Uh, any sort of, any kind of wild or zany kind of prediction for the game any sort of thing I think, that I think Justin Timberlake's going to have a wardrobe malfunction during the, the halftime mm. do, do you think Janet will appear during Tim, Timberlake's uh I know I think they're going to do something where he's singing performing with Prince because oh, I mean really? you know, I think they're going to tie something into that because you know that was his whole you know Paisley Park and all that stuff any there, drones so. in his Super Bowl uh, halftime show? Well, he did his own. What when was that? Five or six years ago, when Prince did the halftime show. Um, but I think Justin Timberlake is the is the headliner for this one. So I think they're going to do something. They're going to tie Prince in somewhere. No, but any any drones? You think there'll be any drones? I don't know. It's a it's inside because they had Maybe drones last year, like, right? Didn't they? All into the ceiling like Lady Gaga did last year. Was it last yeah. year that she did? I think I think it might have been last year. I'm not sure. Maybe he'll I'll, rise up from the floor. I'll I'll go out on a limb and make a really bold, risky prediction here. The Super Time Super Bowl halftime show, the music will be not one hundred percent live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. That's risky it'll as hell. It'll be partially lip synced. I know it's yeah. hard to, that's a crazy thing for me to predict, but I don't think they do that anymore, do they, Bum? As far as I know, they do. It's all pre. <laughs> yeah. Ninety-nine point nine percent lip lip sync. Yep. Yeah. Well, the, the dance moves are real. The dance moves. Yeah, the dancing is real. We can see it, but is everything else, eh, who knows, right? Hey, thank you guys for for joining in on the the first, as far as I know, the first uh, share a beer pregame show. Um, yep. No charge. Um, thank you very much. And and the first Doritos Blaze Challenge. Yes. Live on right. air right and, here. And everybody saw the it. Last, the last Doritos Blaze Challenge. And probably. probably the last Doritos Blaze. Exactly, yeah. So thank you to everybody. Enjoy your game. Enjoy it with your friends, family, whoever you're enjoying it with. Or, you know, solo uh, with your favorite foods. Um, and make a list of your favorite commercials, maybe your top five, and let's talk about it on the first Share a Beer show coming, uh, what is that? Um, February 10th. February 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. So, All right. We'll see you then. Good luck to the Eagles. Good luck to the Patriots, man. Let's have a good game, and we'll see you guys dilly dilly. Right. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly.